What's going on guys, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to another match preview for you guys today. In this video we're going to be talking about Burnley versus Chelsea, Chelsea's second away trip of the week and it takes us to Turf Moor. We're going to go through team news, the last six games for both teams, we're going to talk about both teams' form going into the match. And is this game going to be as easy for Chelsea as you think it's going to be? We're going to discuss this in this video down below. So before we start this, if you guys haven't done so, smash that like button and press that subscribe button. And help me get just that little bit closer to 20k. And yeah, let's go straight into the preview. Burnley versus Chelsea and Chelsea's second away trip of the week takes them up north to Turf Moor on a away day that I am so glad that I don't have to do this season because it's the one away trip that I dread looking forward to every single time we play them because it's a long R7 hour ride to the middle of nowhere with nowhere to get any decent food awful ground i'll be real i'm just glad we're not going to burnley this season it's one of the few wins that we can take out of 2020 and burnley are usually a very frustrating team to face but with recent form and with chelsea's recent growing record as well there's a lot of confidence going into Chelsea's way for this matchup. Burnley are yet to win a Premier League game this season. They start the season poorly with the joint lowest goals scored in the Premier League. And with them conceding three times the amount of goals they've scored this season, they aren't going to be coming into this match with a lot of confidence. Chelsea also like their trips up to Turf Moor. We've won three out of our last four games there and we've won 2-0 the last four times we've gone to Turf Moor. So I can't lie, things are looking our way and confidence has also been growing around the Chelsea side. We've already spoken about the 4-0 win away at Krasnodar. Hakim Ziyech made his first start of the season and had a, had a man of the match performance. A switch to 4-3-3 also brought a completely revitalised Chelsea side for the final 15 minutes. And we look to have finally solved those issues between transitioning from defence to attack. And with, two, and with three clean sheets in a row, the defence looks confident and we have a competent goalkeeper that is actually saving us points on a gamely basis. Edward Mendy has been a rock in front of goal and even though he's had no real competition because of how poorly Kepa and Willy Caballero have played whenever they've stepped between the sticks, it still hasn't made him complacent. He's still played like a player that's been out there to prove a point and he's still been ridiculous for us. He's had key saves against Manchester United, Sevilla and Krasnodar as well. And he's a massive presence in the box and that is something that we severely lacked throughout the last season and a half. If you remember through Sari's season, Frank Lampard's first season, one of our biggest problems was dealing with crosses, set pieces and corners. Kepa didn't catch a single corner throughout the entire 1920 season. And we were exploited for that weakness in our side on multiple occasions by bare different sides. So it's been so refreshing seeing Edouard Mendy there catching corners and actually competing with challenges and crosses into the box. And that is something that's going to be really needed tomorrow against Burnley as well. Because Burnley are a very tall, very physical side. And yeah, they do like hoofball and inshallah football, but they do it very well and they're a very disciplined side. So we are he is going to have a lot of physical threats in the box and he is going to have to fight for those. But I would rather have Edouard Mendy fighting for those crosses than Kepa or Willy Caballero because he has the wingspan to reach it and he dominates in the air. Him and Kurt Zuma together, Rudiger as well, is going to be a madness, honestly. So with the better side on paper, we are in the better form. We've got better confidence going into the match. Burnley have had an awful start to the season. This really should be easy for us, right? Well, wrong. Well, not wrong, but semi-wrong. Burnley, they have had an awful start to the season. And if we're going to be real about it, we should be beating Burnley. I'm not going to go into the reasons why. Because they're around the bottom of the league. And we shouldn't even be looking around that region. So, this should be an easy win for us on paper. But that doesn't mean Burnley aren't going to be frustrating as hell. They know how to make the bigger teams work in games. And... I think it's going to be another one of those games where if we don't get an early goal, the lead's just going to go further and further away from us. And the more we get towards the 90th minute, the more Burnley are going to favour themselves. If you look at the game against Tottenham, for example, they frustrated the hell out of them. Spurs only scored with their first shot on target in the 77th minute. And if we don't get an early goal, the game is going to become harder and harder to break down. They're going to sit deep. They're going to have everybody behind the box. They don't have any confidence in themselves going forward. But the one thing that they do have confidence in themselves is defensively. They are very disciplined. They know how to keep the two backs of four. And they know how to frustrate us. And I'll be real, 
we've struggled with breaking down teams and we've also struggled with consistency as well. So it wouldn't be too far out of the ordinary to expect another slip up. I'm not going to sit here and just talk negative. I do think Chelsea are going to win this game. I'm not too worried about it, but please do not underestimate Burnley because Burnley love being underestimated. They love having a club just walk in there thinking they're just going to walk through them and within 20 minutes they barely even had a shot through because all they've done is play sideways, sideways foot I'll be real, if we played a 4 2 3 1, I'd be very worried about this game just being a nil nil drag. If we played a 4 3 3, which looked a lot more expansive, which got the best out of Mason Mount and Kai Havertz, I will be real, that is where we can cause the most chaos. Here, if we played a 4 2 3 1, all I can see is just sideways between the two pivots or sideways between the two centre backs. We try and progress a little bit through one side, we can't find someone, we go backwards again through the right, and then you just rinse and repeat for 90 minutes. Frank Lampard showed great get game management against Krasnodar, but it also showed a formation that helped with transitions, which is something that we really struggled with throughout this season. So I really hope we see the 4-3-3 in this match. I don't really know Frank Lampard was speaking about in the pre-match press conference more like it was something that we would turn to if the 4-2-3-1 wasn't working. But I do hope we play the 4-3-3. Another thing that I'm also worried about as well is rest. I'm not trying to throw out excuses, but this is the preview. We're going to go through all possible scenarios in this. And Burnley, they haven't had a game throughout the midweek. Chelsea, they had to travel to Russia and back. And Frank Lampard's already said that that might be an issue for his team. He hasn't got a team with a lot of injuries, but he has a very tired squad after only getting getting back into the country early on Thursday so he's going to be assessing the players today and early tomorrow as well to see what the best fit is for Burnley on Saturday but like I already said please do not underestimate Burnley because they just prefer it if you do that it just plays right into their hands Going on into the team news, there's not really much to talk about. Thiago Silva's back in the squad after a maintenance issue kept him out of the game against Krasada. I think that's just Frank Lampard trying to use him as sparingly as possible. I do think he could have played in that match, but I'm not going to say too much about it. Like We won 4-0, our defenders was fine, we move on. Kepa's also back in training after a shoulder injury. Doesn't really mean too much, but he's back in training as well, so we don't really have too many injury problems, except for Billy Gilmore, who's coming back from his injury still. And yeah, let's go straight into the lineup. I'm going to start in goal, although it's an easy pick. Edward Mendy, just nobody else. Maybe pet a check. But Edward Mendy's got three clean sheets in a row, so keep him. He's a formidable force, and he's going to be there to deal with the crosses that Burnley are really going to be piping in whenever they try counter us. Reese James, I'm going to play on the right hand side because I do think it'd be good to rest as per equator. There will be some rotations in this in this match, but half of them will be players that had some sort of impact in the Krasnodar game anyway. Kurt, um, Kurt Zuma and Thiago Silva start as the two centre-backs. That just makes sense to me. And again, I'm not changing the left-back either because Emerson or Alonso is very prone to making a stupid error in that match. So we're going to stick with Ben Chilwell. Didn't have the best of games against Krasnodar, but he's been better off in the league game, so I'm going to play him in this game as well. I'm going to go for Kante as the lone DM. I've always said I don't really like Kante playing in that lone DM role, but I think it's the best that we're going to have to deal with for right now. I don't think he's too bad in that position. I just think he roams a little bit too much and he leaves that area a little bit too exposed. Kante's a ball progressor by nature. You've got you to gotta teach him slowly to become that natural DM. And I do think it will come, but it will only come in time. In the two number eight roles, going to go for Kai Havertz and Mason Mount because we just look like a completely different animal with them two in there. 4 2 3 1 doesn't really work too much for me. I need to see it to believe it now. 4 3 3, I already saw that and we got three goals in 15 minutes, so I'm going for it again in this game. Also, because we are going to be on the front foot for a lot of this game, Burnley are just going to sit deep and try to absorb as much as they can. So hit them with as much pressure as you can give them. On the right, Hakim Ziyech, man of the match against Krasnodar, just has to start. And we're going to go for Pulisic on the left because he'll have the rest after only coming off on the bench against Krasnodar as well. And Timo Werner up front because, I'd be real, you could go for Olivier Giroud, but I think I'd go for Olivier Giroud more as a plan B. If we're struggling to get a goal and we need someone to improve the link-up play, perfect time to Sorry, perfect time to bring on Olivier Giroud. But guys, this is the end of my play this is the end of I was about to say player ratings. Wow. This is the end of my match preview for Burnley versus Chelsea. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you very very soon. Take care. Up the Chelsea.